Hello viewers, welcome all again to this another series in, at Caribbean Chemicals Live where the topic of conversation will be onion production but more specifically we'll be looking at our pest and disease solution. My name is Dean Parker and with me this afternoon is our product development manager, General Johnson and of course we'll be dissecting onions and getting into the, 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 the best practices where it concerns with pests and diseases. So welcome again General. Yeah, man, um, always, yeah, always a pleasure to have you here in the driver's seat. Um, so, how did we get to the point um, we want to start off with Janai? Break this one for us. How did we get to the point where these individuals are considered to be our CCJ diamonds? All right, so falling in this category is like a prestige category, not oh, Parker. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, being a CCJ diamond means that you have accomplish the target that we have set, right? Indeed. So earlier in this onion program, we have we had decided to set a target about 45,000 pounds, right? Yes. Some persons had came very close, right? Mm -hmm. Some persons had surpassed it. Yes, yes, yes. But a lot of the persons were basically thankful to CCJ and the program that we had provided to deliver that high healthy crop, right? And the storage life. And for this case, look at it, farmers. You need to stay ahead of the target, right? So you're looking at about spending about 250,000 yes. in terms of nutritional products, right? And you can get upwards of 45,000 or more. So what we're saying is that if you focus on proper nutrition, that will minimize your pest and disease and also lead to a greater marketable yield. And that's a perfect survey, John, right, to go into the next slide because we want to build the plant's capacity. So the strategy is a long-term benefit of building plant resilience and then allowing for us or the farmer yeah. to be in a position to reduce the, the, the stresses, whether it be biotic or abiotic, meaning the environmental conditions. We talk about heat stress, water stress, or salinity, or even just even with pesticide application, or even wind shear in some instances. So the emphasis, as I said, building the plants capacity to overcome the weather conditions, to overcome the field conditions, to overcome all the different variables that may very well occur during production, and then you're going to get to that target of, of that 45,000. That, that, so be in the diamond category That's it. this time around. I was going to say semester, <laughs> but be in the category of, of being one of the CCJ diamonds. The addition of the wetting agents, Janoi, how does this um, help a farmer to overcome or to suppress or to manage a disease profile in a, pet, in a crop? All right, what I grew up to understand is that a lot of these pesticides are not basically produced by the plants, right? Yes, yes. So you're trying, to in, you're trying to basically bring in a foreign agent into that plant yes. or on the surface of the plant, right? And generally, sometimes based on even the volume of water, sometimes the water is too much, so you have some runoff. So what we have is a line of advanced, what we call, Spreader stickers. Yes. We call we have penetrance. That's right. And these products generally come with a wetting agent. So you're getting that nice spread, that sticking ability, right? Mm -hmm. And also for for your systemic products, you have that penetration. So so products such as your new flim pea, yes. your exit, your spreader sticker. Farmers, I advise you use these products to get that effective use of that product. Indeed. And not just that, we talk about building the plant's capacity to overcome the stress conditions. Mm -hmm. To the left or right of your screen, I'm not sure which is there you're seeing, we have products such as your Saita, ah. your Fortify, and of course your Green Stim. This is the messaging that we're sending out to the farmers. If we're able to build the plant's resilience through use of phosphites and our phosphonates, then what you're encouraging is a natural plant's defense response, generally. Yeah. So overall, the systemic or the induced response is built into that plant already. What the farmer must do now is to put on these precursors to get that, that immunity up so that when that issue should show up in the field, yeah. guess what? You are able to withstand. A part of the strategy too is also field management. We've gone to farms and we see the irrigation equipment burst and spring water. Eh? We, we've seen the higher seed densities that yeah. are, 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 of course, a factor that will contribute to this. Break that down for us, generally, as we move into the disease triangle. All right, so what, we tra what you're trying, as Parker mentioned, you're trying to manage your cultural aspect, right? That's right. So you're planting population, what you're using as an irrigation source, right? Even the source of water, how you navigate your fields, right? So you have to maintain it because 
as with this triangle, it is showing you that the pathogen has to be present, That's right. right? The host has to be present, and it doesn't mean that the, the, the plant being a plant make it a host. Exactly. It's a susceptible plant, right? That's so right. a plant that is of poor health, that and, is and, and that's how the, 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 the nutrition aspect ah, comes in. That's so it. a stronger plant, yeah, better resistance. Better resistance. A yeah. plant on a zampro or a plant on a saita or a, or a um, fortified fortify or a, a green stem, stem is less, less likely, up Definitely. to 50% less likely farmers to come down with an issue Definitely. where it comes on to um, a pest or a disease. That's it. That's it. So. Generally, so when you have these three lines, the environment, the host, the susceptible host, and the pathogens, then you have that disease spread, right? Mm, so indeed. farmers pay attention to that. And, and, and to that, when you look at the environment, airflow is critical. Yeah. So yeah. we have wind shears coming in from a particular direction. The disease is present. Guess what's going to happen? It's, it's going to move in that direction. Yeah, so right. Also, we as individuals walking through that field, mm. how do we manage the situation? Let's say a farmer, Janoy, finds himself with that issue. How should he move to that field? How should he spray? All right. First of all, you're going to target the area of least uh, infection. Right? Say, that, say that one more time. So you're going to target the area of least infection. So not because you're seeing the, the disease popping up in a particular area, you're going to say, all right. Spray that area first. No. You no, want no, no. to target the area of least infection. Reason being is that if you enter that area of infection first, what will happen? You can carry that disease on your clothes, your shoes, your tools. That's Water right. can help to spread that. So always target the, target the area of least infection. And, and most likely we are using a mechanical sprayer. The, yeah, so you general. turn that mist blower, that batch of prayer, mm. um, pan that we carry at, at CCG. And if you haven't purchased your, your batch, you can, you know, you need to ensure that you, you have one in your possession. But we spread it through those mechanical means. And so we have to be mindful. So again, farmers, we haven't touched the, the products as yet. Mm -mm. All no. we've been speaking about are strategies Things that you can work in every environment, wherever you are, whichever parish. Even if you go to the moon and you plan to grow some onion in a spaceship, guess what? You can put the, the measures together That's and it. work them accordingly. So we've covered that. Make sure your irrigation equipment is, 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 is functional properly. Ensure that you're not having any host plant. And then if you see the issue at first glance, what should a farmer do, Janoy? How, 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 what's the message we're passing on here? All right, so first of all, assess the area, then decide, identify what disease, it may be a pest or a disease, right? And then you draw for the right solution, right? But here's where I put in the plug now. Yeah. We have technical, competent staff here at Caribbean Chemicals. And guess what? You being on this um, session today is not by chance. No. I'm trusting that you have your technical service representative contact information, Janoy. So that you bring us into that field, let us help you to identify, drill down, and then move through and get that right product at the right time That's so it. you can do the application That's as necessary. It. Now, these are some common situations that we've been seeing mm -hmm. over time. They can reduce your yield by as much as? <laughs> I can say upwards of 100%. Because <laughs> right. if, if these diseases were to come in early into the crop in the park, I'm telling you. And onion, and, and this is why, it's very important to manage your nutrition, manage your pest and disease, That's especially right. in a crop like onion. Exactly. Imagine a crop with only about eight, ten leaves at a time. Or if it's in mm -hmm. the younger state, it has about five leaves. Five leaves. Right? Sometimes two and three. And two and three. So if you lose those early leaves, that means you're basically losing the crop. And right? I'm, I'm, may I say this, the population numbers, as they go down under disease pressure, guess mm. what? So too is your marketable yield. That's it. And guess what? There's no guarantee that even when you, mark, when you have is it. It's still good. Ah, I can store. Which we so, touch on. So, so be mindful of this as, as we examine each of these issues. So we have our damping off. We have the downy mildew. We have the botrytis. We're going to touch on purple, purple blush. blush. We're going to stem phylum leaf blight. All these are, are issues. They are not as technical as you believe them to be no, farmers. No. They are there. We, we are identifying the issues. And guess what we're doing? We are providing for you the carbon chemicals solutions. solutions to get it done and get it done properly. So let's explore now for me. Break down damping off for the, for the, for the viewers, you know what? All right. So what generally happens is that you know, if your soil condition is favoring for like pitium or a rhizoctona, generally you have the 
susceptible hosts, which is the seedlings, because they're young and, has, and haven't established yes, big root yes, system, yes. or you haven't taken the proper approach to have proper root systems, then these plants become susceptible to your damping off. So you have where the seedlings become water soaked, right, mushy, and then you have yellowing, complete yellowing of those basically older mm. leaves moving into the younger leaves, then complete death of that plant, wow. right? I remember an analogy where one of our favorite athletes stumbled out of the blocks. Oh. My word. The race is. cannot be completed here and now, farmers, because you are losing population numbers, yep. you are losing seed material. That investment of that land prep, um, planting the seeds, you're down and going down further. Yeah, so products such as your toxin, your carbendazim, your acrobat for your systemic note, these are all soil acting products as well. So you're getting dual mode, you're getting a contact with systemic when you also add into those cocktails your mancozem. Yeah. So you're doing a dual protection and you're getting the coverage. You, you mentioned something too. Where would the farmer see a damping off? All right. Generally in basically your seedbed structure. So if you have either your direct seeding or your transplanting or you have to establish a seedbed, you'll have that damping off. You'll have it earlier into the crop, right? Exactly. So any other seedbed state. And I like the rotation that you provide, Parker. You're giving me a higher end solution and a lower end solution. That's so you're right. basically providing me solutions that will basically manage my budget. Exactly. Right? And giving me that solution. And not just that, we're talking prophylaxis. Ah. We want preventative medication. My, my mother would tell me an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So yeah. here we have a situation where now the, the waterlogging issues, these are man-made problems now. Ah, the yeah, overseeding, yeah. man-made problem again. Yeah. Um, at germination, if you can calibrate that tool, drop those seeds down, you avoid these symptoms and also scouting. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know what your feelings look like, go through, get that issue um, rectified from the onset so you don't have to get that broad acre issue showing up on you. So once those seedlings are, are, are showing up the issue, I encourage our farmers to move in with these products. Here at Caribbean Chemicals, we provide solutions that are practical, functional, and cost-effective. That's it, that's those it. Those three there, the trifecta. That's it. The functional, the practical, and the cost-effective. So wherever you go, whichever farm store in your local, you can find these products readily available at your, at, 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 at um. So what try this leaf blight? This is right. crop establishment now. Yeah, and, 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 and I like those pictures, Parker. So you're giving me an explanation of the type of issues I'm seeing. So I'm seeing right. small spots mm -hmm. with some green halo rings, right? Yes. I'm seeing that direct, that immediate center, and I'm seeing they're also expanding and coming into one. So Indeed. this is the effect you, or the symptom you'll observe That's for botrytis right. leaf bite. So once you're seeing that farmers, you have to jump in with the solution. So walk us through the solution. All right, so we talk about toxin again. We mentioned it earlier. Yeah. So systemic. here's what happened now, systemic, you're penetrating the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do top down effect, literally. You also uh -huh. have a situation where you have bellies in that mixture. Yeah. So you have your paracluster bring your boscolin. In that application, you can go um, with a combi style. Oh, so, so, you, so, so you can combine a bellis with a mancozeb. Ah, so you're getting ah. a protectant yeah. coat on the outside and you're getting a penetrant at, at the same time. You can go topsin with also a mancozeb. Mm -hmm. Or if the issue is just showing up, you can always pull for your sulcox and okay. rotate. Okay. And you have, so not just that, we have a deep rotation. Mm -hmm. So a farmer can literally start in onion crop and just go buy um, all, all these products one and, and, and get them full down. control. So and, and have control over, not just full control, full control over a wide range of pathogens, uh, disease-causing organisms that are, can develop in your onion crop. All right, all right. So this is good stuff. You're, you're giving me outward protection, right? That's right. And inward protection. That's right. So double security. That's right. As, as, locking as, the gate and, and keeping the body out. As I sometimes say in a crop insurance. That's right. Crop insurance. So this is perfect stuff. Air circulation favors the disease development. Avoid the overwatering. You hear we're saying it's over and over. Yeah. These are symptoms, these are issues that a farmer on site can correct in one go. And, and at CCG, we provide uh, irrigation solutions. Right? That's, that's right. So? That's right. That's All correct. Right, that's from, from the venturi right down to the tapes and the head connectors. So reach out to us again at our contact number, 757-002224. And of course, our social media platform. But more specifically, we dive in deeper. We're talking about downy mildew. Um, again, too, we mentioned 
50 to 100 percent crop loss mm -hmm. can be seen when we have these incidences showing up. So we're talking about pale spots. They, they start from the tip and work themselves down. Yeah. You'll see gray or purple lesions on the leaves and you will recognize the fact that the plants are just turning yellow and they're collapsing. And, and, and the period that we have recently experienced where we're getting increased rainfall. That's right. And we're getting cooler conditions. That's right. Is an uh, ideal condition for the mill. So building, warmer so. days, cooler nights. Yeah. Yeah. And once you have a field that is dense, if you notice the field at the bottom, January, weeds are also inside the beds. Ah, so guess what's going to happen, farmers? The cultural practice, the cultural meal, you're trapping that moisture, you're trapping the humidity. Ah, and yeah. so all of that moisture is trapped, favoring the development of the disease. Again, we're putting in Topsin, Acrobat, Bellis, Mancozeb, Zampro. Ideal solution. So we, we, we have these suite of products that, as I said earlier, you can literally go pick up at a farm store and just put them down as your crop insurance, as I mentioned earlier. So the other issue that might show up in terms of common diseases. All right, so generally going into the periods of January into March, yes. you'll generally see your purple blotch becoming more prevalent. Uh, also your stem phylum leaf blight. And your, well, bulb blood is basically common throughout the season. Common so you're talking throat. about your fall or your spring season, you have to watch out for your bulb blood. And I think I would didn't mention about the down milieu. Uh, once the pathogen enters that, the bulb or the plant, you'll generally have it causing post harvest issue, which mm. is similar to the bulb blood. Which is similar to the bulb blood. Yeah, so you might harvest the bulbs, but once they're in storage, you basically you lose, start breaking it, you lose down. the harvest. Yes, you start breaking yeah. down. Yeah. And if you should bring that to market, of course, your, your vendors will be coming back to you saying, hey, you know, what have you sold us? So in, in, in a symptomatic way now, yeah. again, too, we're talking about purple blotch. The lesion itself appears water soaked. You're going to see that purple coloration, as yeah. the name suggests. As the mycelium develops, then it spreads through that field. Uh, again, moisture, air movement causing a major issue here again. Again, the products, we bring them, them we're gonna sing them this afternoon until you learn them, <laughs> that's you know, it, that's write it. them down in the table of your heart somewhere there, put them down, because we're talking about what? Bellis, Topsin, Mancozeb, Solcox. When you're ready and you say, which disease? You just reel back those four things again. Bellis, Topsin, Mancozeb, Solcox, because they too will provide you with sufficient coverage and control. That's it. Take the farmers to um, stem phylum leaf blight. All right, so stem phylum leaf blight will give a similar appearance. So you'll see the blotch starting appear at the center of the leaf yes. with what we call a sideways eye. So turning your eye, the shape of your eye sideways, that's how the appearance of that, of that spot. And what that does is to expand, right? Generally, you'll see your, your nice green leaves starting to fall over. And when you yes. turn up that side, you're seeing those blotches. Instead of turning purple, like with purple blotch, yes. this, this tends to turn and give you a dark look. Yes. So it won't appear purple, but give you a dark look. A darkish, brownish, blackish look. Yeah. Appearance. Yeah. yeah. And the one, and the thing is that in the Parker, you see both the purple blush and the same file in leaf blight, if they attack your crop before the bulbing stage, you know, this will slow mm. that bulb formation, you know. So you want Farmers, to, I want you to take note of this, you know. Yeah, man, seriously. If the issue shows up before what? Bulbing. Bulbing seed. You may not even get bulb. No, it may, it may get the some size of bulbing is, because the plant is now under stress, farmers. And, and, and note this, when you and I are under stress, we can't form chance so effective. That's and it. so what you find is usually if you should be producing or reproducing then, that whole, um, that entire period of growth and development is slowed down or to naught. Yeah, and yeah. so you are impacted all over. This is a post harvest issue. This is bulb rot. Um, it, it doesn't start in the storeroom, farmers. It starts in the field. Mm -hmm. The symptoms of which now is where you would have invested your money and time only to find out now that you're losing. You walk into your storeroom uh, and, and you start to smell that odor. Mm -hmm. You know, that is telling you something is off. We're talking about water soak lesions, um, the starting of the leaves. And then as it goes down to the, pea, the area where the base of the leaf stalk and the bulb begins, yeah. that's where the intrusion occurs, yeah. the moisture and, and, and the infection, and then it starts to break down. And of course, the discoloration shows up. And then now that's where you have the issue in terms of that rotting. Bear in mind that it spreads throughout the process, throughout your storage room also. And it's so isolate, remove. 
And it also goes back to the talk of nutrition in the park. As yes. I mentioned, the, the Sayyid or the Fortify, what you want to do is to have that strong cellular system. That's right. right. So mm -hmm. the bacteria won't be able to penetrate those cells. That's right. right. That's and right. this also goes back to the regulation of water. That's right. If you're over flooding those fields and causing excess water to be built up in the cell, you're making them soft, easy to be penetrated by the... Not just cells. that. For the farmers who like to use a high volume of nitrogen. Oh, that is it. Mm, that's <laughs> where the other issue comes in. You're pushing that green lush leaf. Mm -hmm. Remember, you're affecting the quality of that final product. That's so that's it. why we've spent the, the, the work in the field in the trenches, John, looking at the crop, dissecting it, and putting in the kind of work that we can come and share this information with you this afternoon. So we want to flip the script now and look at the insect pests that are likely to affect the crop and of course how to manage those symptoms and issues and you know help the farmers to grow their mm -hmm. yield. I want for all farmers to get to that 40,000 pounds or 45,000 pounds per acre because it's possible. Mm -hmm. So for, go ahead Jonathan. All right so starting off with ants. Uh, this, this is from day one. Yes. Right. So seeds. once you put down those seeds if you don't secure those seeds with a proper treatment of your carbaryl or your tropical insect powder or if you, if you are able to drench or run diazon through your fertigation, you'll end up losing do, that investment. I'll tell, I, I tell you what I've seen in a field of yeah. cucumbers. The farmer is planting and, and the ants are walking away the seed. Same time. Same time. All ah, right. And, and they follow the drip table <laughs> all the way through. And imagine the onion seeds, which are more small. Uh, Thank probably you. each ant can pick up an onion seed and exactly, move away. Exactly, and move away. So, so you're losing plants from the get-go. So the, the solutions, your carburel, how do they use a carburel? Is it dusting All right, or, or, so or, or irrigation wise? No, what they can do, you know, they can dust the seed, properly dust the seed. So what do you want to do? Make sure, ensure that you're wearing a proper PPE. Oh right? yes, certainly. Properly dust that seed. So whatever pony you're putting in here, properly uh, coat the seed with a carburel, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can put in your planter and plant. Similar thing can be done with the tropical insect powder. Wonderful. However, if you have ants mound being built up, you you can drench in particular areas, mm -hmm. or if it's a wide, uh, widespread problem, yes. you can fertigate that and through the drip system, Wonderful. quite soil active. Wonderful. So here's the problem now. We're talking about cutworms, caterpillars, mm. armyworms. Okay. Um, this is um, a perennial issue yeah. in the crop where the farmers will lose out if we're not careful um, in terms of production. So whether it be whichever type of larvae or worms in particular, caterpillar, we have the solution here. Try testing and proven. Recently, we've introduced Mimic. We've introduced Indicab. We have car tracks, which is, which is excellent at the same time. And also Phoenix with a view to help you overcome that issue. We're talking about suppression of numbers, mm -hmm. um, reducing the pest population, but in, in, in economic means, so you don't have to wonder what's going to happen to that harvest. All right, and, and Parker, let me just touch on the Phoenix. This, this is a new entrant to the market, yes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This product is particularly designed to target the larval stage of the pest, right? So, so minimizing any potential of resistance to be built up. Because the farmers have to be aware of that, you know. That's if right. you use a product that targets the various stages, it's a greater likelihood of that pest building resistant to the product in the future, right? So Phoenix is designed to target the larval stage and you get a 14 to 21 days residual activity. So what that means is that if I spray today, 14 days later or 21 days later, that product will still give control of that pest. Excellent yeah. stuff, excellent Lovely. stuff. So you have control, you're getting the benefit and get what's that, it's going to be cost efficient. Ah. Because your rate of return now, Jana, you're saying to me and to all farmers, and I know this for a fact, yeah. having tested the product myself, yeah. that you're getting 14 days of not having to go back in that field with another insecticide to control lepidopter. Yeah, so that's saving you on the bottom So line. that's saving you because you'd have to pay for a tank mix, pay for the applicator, and at the same time, if you're using equipment, you're paying to service and apply that, that product at the same time. So you're winning at the end of the day when you use um, the CCJ strategy in terms of Lepidoc. And, and if you want to know more, more about um, worm control, on our YouTube page, we have um, you know, situations where you can go and look back at those videos. All right, so we have our leaf miners and the onion strips that tend to also cause issues. Again, too, we have the line to rotate. Just walk us through the, the CCJ solutions. All right, so what we have in terms of systemic is our protect 
yes. very effective solution, right? Imidacloprid, and it's a low application rate, so half to one teaspoon, so you're getting that control. And bear in mind, you know, leaf miner can do some serious damage once the condition is right. That's right. right? So in that rotation as well, you have your caprid, which will give you both contact and systemic approach. Rotate it now with your diameter weight, giving that systemic approach. So if the land is starting to feed, yes, you're getting yes. that knocked down. And then no cure coming in as a nice uh, safe solution with yes, a short man. PHI. Excellent we'll translaminar that, action too. Yeah man, nice translaminar action. So you're getting that control. So both leaf miner and the trips. Right? Yes man, and these products can of course, you know, effectively control that. In your tank mix also, we are recommending to include um, your adjuvants. The questions are what are these adjuvants and why should I add them to my tank mixes? Right. So go ahead, John. All right, here what now, viewers. You can lose about 70% efficacy of that product if you don't use average adjuvant. You know what? Right? Just, just say that a bit slower. So All right. Viewers, growers, you can lose 70% efficacy of the product if you don't use the right adjuvant. So right? you spent $1,000 mm -hmm. and you don't use the right adjuvant, you're losing how much money? You're losing $70, $70 out of $100. Oh, $1,000? Oh. Sorry, yeah. $700. $700. $700. So for every so if you have a dollar, you're losing $0.70. Cents. That is it. For every $100, you're losing $70. That is so, it. So if, if your time mix is ten grand. Let's sit forward and work the month out now. You're losing $7,000 by not including an exit, a new FMP, or a spreader sticker. Because you're getting coverage, you're getting penetration, you're getting that product bonding to the surface and extending that product life, coating, preventing any breakdown from UV lights, or at the same time from even rainfall or washing off. I was in Moko, Clarin, the other day, at a function training. And the farmer would have pointed out to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask him any question. You know, in just mentioning adjuvant, he said, look here, man. I was able to use a spreader sticker to spray my pumpkin. Mr. Parker, I could have seen the difference a night and day. Night and day. Instead yeah, of yeah. leave them thick and waxy, and, and I know when I did the application, I didn't say the more insect. You see the part where I don't use it, you know? Let me eat them off. Ah, and I'm saying, you see what happened now? Rain fell immediately after he mentioned. That's and guess it. what? That product, you know, going over the counter, over over the surface, yeah. and preventing that erosion of that product. So guess what? You get control. You would have saved time, money, and again, an application. And Had you done the entire field with a spreader stick. And especially for a crop like only with a wax leaf on a small surface area. That's right. It is a must. I wouldn't go out and spray without that. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. So we've covered them both. We've looked at the benefits. You've known the strategy. Again, this is going to be saved on our platform, generally, so our farmers, our viewers can go back, watch, pause, take their notes, and then move to the farm stores and in the local, local areas to, of course, um, purchase and to utilize in their field. Um, are they, we're coming down to the wire, so I just want to say to you, thanks for participating, but I'm told that we have um, questions from the different um, viewers and participants. So I'm going to invite Georgia Robinson, our marketing manager at this time, to share with us the, no, the well, questions. The and then we'll, we'll look back at our okay. um, upcoming events after, thereafter. So there are two questions. Sure. This one is not on you, though. Do you have a program for eggplant? No, we don't have an exact program for eggplant, mm -hmm. but there could be some taking out of us of our tomato program, which is a salinaceous. Yes, yeah, tomato plant, RC program. Yeah. Yeah. And the other question is Acrobat a systemic fungicide? Is there a limit to how many times I can use Phoenix in a crop cycle? Okay, wonderful. Let me take the Acrobat. Mm -hmm. Now Acrobat is, is systemic and contact. It's a it's a dual action product. So it contains um the Mancozia portion which is your contact and also the diameter morph portion which is um, the penetrant and, and, and help to, to cover um, that, that disease condition. So it's a contact systemic product in one. Yeah, and regarding the Phoenix, what you want to use it? You want to use it about two to three times, right? Because we always suggest a rotation, so That's you don't right. want yes. uh, to abuse the active ingredient. We want to be able to get the control in the future, right? So two to three times is ideal. All right. Um, which product would be effective to control the purple blotch? Purple blotch, you want to take that one, Parker? Well, all right, as mentioned earlier, purple blotch 
can be controlled by your bellies. You have topsin, you also have your mancozeb and your carbenazine that can be used in rotation to not just control but to also suppress or prevent the issue from showing up. Again, yeah. we are big on prevention rather yeah. than having to, to, to control or to, or to cure that issue. So I trust that answers the question for you. And the last question, what would be the best approach in preventing or suppressing diseases on a whole? What's the best approach? Well, well for me, and, and that's the gospel we, we, we spread here. Nutrition. Build a plan, the nutrition. Proper nutrition. A healthier plant, a healthier organism, a healthier human being. Guess what? You're able to withstand and overcome all the different stresses, be it insect or pests or diseases. And what we do at CCJ is to provide a range of nutritional options. So we're talking about we have what four, four lines of foliage. Oh, yes, yeah, so we, we have the two the line of granulas. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So we we want you to be ahead of the problem, right? So we don't so we don't want you to always be behind the problem using pesticides continuously. We want you to be ahead of the problem and using your pesticides as top solutions yes, to get on, get on track and to continue the crop. Yes, indeed, indeed. And so for our upcoming activities this afternoon, um, Monday the 11th, we want to be, we're going to be participating in the Customer Appreciation Day, and this is at WNB Enterprise in Old Harbor, St. Catherine, um, Nikhil Dadze um, will be on site for that day. Um, Crystal Cruikshank will also be um, participating. Um, Tuesday, December 12th, we'll be having a pest and nutrition strategy session. And this is at the Old Kingdom Hall building in Mendez, St. Catherine. And this is also starting at 10. Nikhil Dadze will be there. Um, take number three and four, General. All right, so Tuesday, December 12th, we have a vegetable production training. And this will be at the Mafuna, Mafuta sorry, Cooperative Office. And this is St. James. And this will start at 10 a.m. with uh, Levon Bart will be on site. And then on that same Tuesday, December 12th, we'll participate in a customer appreciation day at Sunlight Agricultural Solution. It's that Bull Savannah, and this is in St. Elizabeth. So watch out for Sian Spence and Andre Rance. And yes, indeed. And tune in on Tuesday, the 12th, at 3.15 on Mellow FM, as we, of course, dissect ag other agricultural solutions yeah. from Caribbean Chemicals. Wednesday, as well, on the 13th, will be on Power 106, um, starting at 6.18 in the morning. So again, join us for conversation. And Friday, December 15th, we we'll participate in the third Customer Appreciation Day. This is at M&K. Um, and this will be at DMDM Jones Amalgamated and 100% Farm Stories. Um, so that's three Customer Appreciation. Oh, okay. in one. Wow, so, so three different ones. Oh, three different. So customers. three different stores will be on the fifteenth. I wonder who is gonna. We're very um, old. We're very old. Store promoter, a sales indeed. agronomist, and a indeed, market indeed. agronomist. So all the way through, we'll be, we'll be there it, on the side, yes, giving back to our farmers. Um, you know the necessary assistance and help, and you know saying to them, thank you for joining us. And we thank have one you more for, question, Mr. Oh, Parker. certainly. Go ahead. Um, does sulfur contribute to the spiciness of the onion? Yeah, it, con it will contribute to the potency. Yes, right. indeed. Uh, okay. All right, so, um, you know, as we continue in conversation, we want to ask that you like, comment, and subscribe to our pages. Of course, you can always reach out to us via WhatsApp, and this is at 876-401-4766, or via our social media pages, be it Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and this is at Caribchem Jam. And again, our website, www.caribchemjam.com. I see Ms. Robinson again with another. Stevie Henry is always watching us, so if he's watching us, I would like him to send me a WhatsApp, because we have his gift from the last session. Okay, so Stevie, don't let Christmas come and you don't get your, your gift, so reach out to us via our different pages, so we can, of course, um, provide you with that gift item as you have one. Thank you again for participating yep. and feel free again to reach out to us on our different pages and on our landline you know, as we continue to grow your years. Thank That's you great. and have a good day.